LPS. LPS is go. Houston flight. Houston flight, uh, if you give me, if you pull me at the end, I would appreciate it. Stand by. Yes, sir, we'll pull you later. Mila. Mila, stop. Yo, Darius Britt here, and this is nine things you should check before you press the record button. This applies to narrative films, short films, feature films, music videos, commercials, whatever. I'm gonna try and keep this as confusion free as possible. The placement of these settings may be different in your camera's menu, so you may have to track them down. Let's get into it. Level. Once I set the camera down where I intend to shoot, the first thing I do is adjust the level. If your tripod has a bubble level, then it's easy. If not, then you can use the leveling system in your camera. If you don't have either, then you're you know, gonna have to eyeball it. Mm, memory card. If I haven't formatted it the night before, I'll check and see what's on it. Make sure there's nothing important that I shouldn't erase. If I don't need any of it, then I'll reformat the card and erase all the old stuff. Resolution and frame rate. Resolution should be set to 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames per second. This is full H. D. And 24 frames per second is the standard frame rate for film. On this particular camera, if I wanted to shoot slow motion, I would have to set the camera resolution to 1280 by 720 at 60 frames per second. I shoot most of my B-roll at 60 frames. If you have a camera that shoots 4K and you want to shoot 4K, then you're going to set the resolution to 3840 by 2160 and 24 frames per second. Picture style. On most shoots, I just set my picture style to neutral. Some people like to use the cine style, but you can use whatever you want. I personally find that neutral flattens the image enough for me to manipulate later on in post. White balance. I usually just use the in-camera presets. Here, I'm setting my white balance to daylight. They're actually really, really good. I rarely have to do a custom white balance. In your case, it's probably gonna be the same. Select the shooting conditions that you're shooting under and keep it moving. Shutter speed. Your shutter speed should be set to 1 50th of a second. This is going to give you the filmic look. We find our number for shutter speed by taking whatever the frame rate is and doubling it. Since we're shooting at 24 frames per second, if we double that, we get 48. So our shutter should be set to 1 48th. However, since many cameras don't have a 1 48th option for shutter, we round up to 1 50th. Booyah. ISO. If you're shooting outside in broad daylight, your ISO will usually be around 1 to 200. If you shoot at sunset or indoors, you'll find that your ISO is probably going to be around 800. Here, since I'm shooting at sunset, I am setting my ISO to 800. I generally don't go past 800 with my camera because things start to get a little noisy but my camera is also seven years old. Focus. I'm usually paranoid about focus, especially outside. I check this before every shot. I use the digital zoom button to punch in close on something with lots of lines like a human ear or an eyeball or a part of a building, and then I grab focus. If you don't have a digital zoom option on your camera, then you can use a regular zoom lens. Just zoom into something tight with a lot of lines, grab your focus, and then reset your frame afterwards. Framing. Last but not least, I check my framing. I usually use the rule of thirds guide in my camera to set my composition. Once you have a frame that you're happy with, you can adjust your aperture to get the proper exposure and then you can just press record. That's all that I got for you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, I will subscribe. I also offer one-on-one -on -one chat sessions. Bring your filmmaking or YouTube questions. We can also review your work in a session. I will leave a link in the description section where you can get more info on that. I'll also leave a link to my budget filmmaking startup kit on kit.com where I can recommend gear and books. I update it frequently. Thank you for watching. Deeper down. They would make a total of six stops on this traverse collecting samples from large rocks.